Okay, so, all right, well, good morning. I think everyone's from Europe, so I think I can say good morning and not make any mistake. Uh, yeah, David's not going to be able to join. Natalia's on vacation, and I don't know if you folks know. Uh, Jacopo is expecting a baby sometime this week as a due date, so uh, not surprised he's not on the call. He's got, he's got bigger things to worry about than, <laughs> than, a, than, a, than a boring meeting, so... All right, so uh, thanks for joining. We'll, we'll get things uh, kicked off and let me expand my slides so you can see better. Um, uh, so uh, three main topics. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, I mean, we hit a milestone in, in the community. Uh, I mean, we've sort of already talked about this and uh, maybe even at, uh, at, at the virtual contribute event, um, like a, we reached a milestone with a number of uh, community contributors. Uh, wanted to do a quick recap on Hackathon, which again was successful, but there are certain things that, that I mean, learnings that, that I wanted to share and discuss uh, on the Hackathon um, and for, for future events going forward. And then um, some of you, I think George, you actually provided feedback on the GDK survey draft that was available a week or so ago. It's, it's I think it's going to go out like either today or sometime shortly. I haven't uh, gotten confirmation from Ash. Uh, so once it's uh, available, I'll send out the, uh, I'll post the links on the core team channel as well, but want to talk about that briefly. Uh, and I think Lee, you, you're aware of this as well on various GDK discussions we've had in the past. I know we've been talking about it, but I'm not sure yeah. if I've had sight of it yet. Is it, okay? Um, which is it in core team or is it in within the GDK? project or uh yeah i have a link to the issue uh i mean i, I don't think the issue has a link to the preview of the survey because um i don't know who has access to them but i can give a quick update and then uh i mean it'll go live soon enough anyways cool um so and uh, uh and then a couple of quick uh, topics under any other business uh but not sure if people have any other topics uh that people want to discuss Hey, Ben, I just noticed that you just joined us. Good evening. I, I added a point on the uh, any other business. Yeah, what, what is, what's a topic that, well, let's go add him there right now before we forget. Yeah. Um, the, I want to know the status of the uh, Community Advisory Council, because ah, the yeah. request has been yeah. open. Okay, yeah. Ever. So, Cool. Uh, yeah, I need to follow up uh, with David on that. Unfortunately, he's not on, but yeah, that's a good reminder. Uh, thanks for adding that already. So, cool. Um, so, let's see. I'll get back to the presentation mode. So, yeah, I, I think I mentioned uh, uh, the, the sort of... Um, and news has sort of been uh, been discussed already. Uh, we hit a milestone, I think officially, I forget the date, I have a blog post that's uh, in the MR stage uh, that's, uh, that's sort of on hold right now. Uh, so I think we hit the milestone like about a month ago, uh, crossing the threshold of 3000 contributors, which is, which is great. I mean, it's always nice to have nice round numbers and our uh, graphic design team even uh, uh, designed a nice uh, graphic that we can add to the blog post, which will be going out uh, soon. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And then in the same blog post, I also took the opportunity to introduce uh, new core team members, Lee and, and Natalia. So uh, uh, continuing on the theme of uh, growth in the community. Uh, um, so I thought it was appropriate to include that. And I mean, originally, I think we're trying to get the uh, post out, I think last week. Uh, uh, you may have noticed uh, our social uh, campaigns sort of gone quiet over the last few weeks. Uh, and that's due to the fact that um, like, uh, you know, after George Floyd's passing a couple of weeks ago, uh, we wanted to stop all like a celebrity, uh, celebratory type of uh, posts or blog posts. Uh, so those things are uh, currently on hold. And uh, maybe in the next week or so, I mean, Lee, in case you're curious, I mean, you already provided feedback and review a couple of weeks ago. That's what's sort of holding it up. 
which I think is appropriate. So we'll follow the social team's guidance uh, on, you know, um, they'll probably give us a guidance on when to uh, start um, in, um, a restart, uh, uh, like the regular blog post, like celebrating important accomplishments and so forth. So. Uh, the blog post is pretty much ready to go. It, I think uh, uh, the marketing team added sort of on hold in the title, uh, but I think pretty much all the edits are done. Uh, just waiting for the buttons to be pushed. So that's all, sort of where things are, but still wanted to, I mean, celebrate it. I mean, it's a, it's a good occasion. Uh, um, so uh, it was a worthwhile thing to highlight in the blog post so that's uh, that's coming out soon. And all of you had a had a big hand in it. So thank you. Uh, so hopefully, um, I don't know, like we'll, we'll see, it'll be interesting to see when we get to 4,000, like maybe it'll take a year, maybe like we'll see, but, uh, I think we're already at like a 3,100 the last time I checked. So the numbers, numbers growing pretty fast. So, um, so that's that, I mean, any, I don't know if, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think a lot of times we talked about like when I first joined GitLab a couple of years ago, we talked about like a 2000 contributors that included both team members and the wider community members. And this 3000 number is just the wider community num number. So I'm um, pretty happy to see the growth of the wider community over the past few years. Uh, so it's pretty gratifying. Um, so. Cool. So, um, so uh, that's just a quick update uh, on the blog post that's coming out. Uh, I mean, another awesome thing that happened over the past couple of weeks, uh, I mean, when I, I mean, when the hackathon wrapped up a couple of weeks ago, I, I just looking at the list of MRs and couldn't believe it. We, um, the previous record of MR submitted over a two day period was like 147, definitely under 150. And then we just, you know, crushed the record by more than 60%, uh, got to 240. Uh, and I mean, a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of, I mean, a lot of you core team members not only submitted MRs, uh, but also help people on Gitter, help with reviews. I think George, you got tagged with some of the uh, some of the reviews for inter internationalization. So appreciate you doing that and um, helping a relatively, I mean, new contributor. I mean, just started contributing a few few uh, months ago, uh, Gilang from Indonesia, and also adding like issues to highlight for the hackathon. So um, uh, um, I mean, so. I mean, great accomplishment over two day period. Um, I mean, who would have thought like you get like a 200 plus MRs uh, in a hackathon. Uh, so it was, uh, it was awesome. I mean, volume was, was phenomenal uh, to a point where my inbox is still out of control because of, you know, what happened two weeks ago, but happy to take that. I'm not complaining. Um, so, uh, so uh, obviously it went very successfully and then we want to keep the momentum and then, but we also want to, so moving forward, um, uh, make future hackathons and future events better. Um, one of them, uh, I mean, this came up, uh, I have a link to the issue. Uh, the request to, was to avoid holding hackathons. We've been pretty much doing it like a second week of the month or second or third week of the month. And that unfortunately coincides with the last week of the release when people are obviously very busy and heads down. Uh, and I was actually surprised the number of MRs that got merged during that week, it, during the hackathon. Uh, I knew the engineers were busy, but uh, I felt bad about adding extra burden on people when they're already uh, have a lot of things on their plate. Uh, so there's an issue that was opened by Paul and what I, what I'll try to do, uh, I mean, I already decided to do this for the next one. We'll, we'll do it. Like a, we'll try to do it in the first week of the month. I think that's, uh, I mean, people have sufficiently recovered from the release. Uh, and then that's like a three weeks from, from the release date. Um, so the next one will be the first week of, uh, September. Uh, we'll see if, We'll be able to sort of repeat that like each quarter, but we'll uh, try to do my best to sort of stick to that. And for some reason, if that those dates are not workable for whatever reason, if we have events or something else going on, uh, I might try to like make the um, like a deadlines more flexible so people have more time to get their their MRs merged so that they don't have to rely on or put additional pressure on the reviewers and maintainers to get things merged. Um, so. 
so that's one of the, one thing that we definitely want to improve uh, or change, uh, starting with the next hackathon. And the next one is, I think Vitaly, you actually brought this up uh, when we had a kickoff session last time, because uh, I talked about a lot of the ethics and issues that we had for front end. Uh, so I started talking to several people on the on the back end team, uh, a couple of engineers and um, uh, and a number of people, uh, and see if there are good issues or epics that we can create on for the back end uh, for the hackathon. Uh, so what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and create an issue and I'll ping the people that I talk to. And I can definitely ping all of you on the core team and see if you have any ideas. I got a couple of suggestions, uh, like, uh, I mean, some of the labels to look for for the back end, like technical debt was, was, was an interesting one. Uh, I think if you look at like what Rajendra worked on, I think he was like able to like harvest a lot of those and, and worked on some of the quick MRs. Um, but when I actually talked to Stan uh, yesterday, he suggested that there might be things that have like a priority three or priority four uh, that are, you know, sufficiently self-contained so that, that might, those might be good candidates. So I might, uh, I might do some like a queries and searches and and look at some of the issues, but you know I don't have the technical background, so I might ping a lot of a lot of you folks here on the call and see if you have any feedback. But uh, uh, you know, because I mean the assumption I I think I made was that things might be more like a self-contained on the front end side of things, but you know the stand didn't think that was necessarily the case. There a lot of back end stuff that that people would be interested in doing and working on. Uh, so if you have any feedback on that, I mean, please let me know, but I'll, I'll definitely go ahead and open an issue, uh, so we can start that conversation. Um, so Ray, I would, yeah, go ahead. I would maybe stay away from the technical debt label. I mm -hmm. could have swore I read in the handbook the other day that it was being discouraged to use that label. Um, okay. I, I can't find it offhand, but it right. was something along the lines of, you know, like technical debt can go to back end, but you don't need to label it as technical debt or something to that effect right. because it's a, um, you know, hmm. what the definition of technical debt is varies greatly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Remy, I, actually, do, do you have any take on that? Or like, I don't, I don't think I saw that. Like, I mean, obviously like yeah. I can't read every pages in the handbook, but yeah. Yeah. So we have, uh, we actually have, uh, an OKR in the engineering productivity team for the mm -hmm. Q2, which is to uh, move away from the backstage label, which okay. is a kind of a, a catch-all label right now. Mm -hmm. And technical debt is uh, is often uh, kind of mixed with this backstage label. So I agree that it's uh, the definition of, of fuzzy right now. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, um, I think the, the idea to, uh, to have more backend, uh, issues for the hackathon is a good idea. Uh, so we, we need to see what, uh, if there's specific labels that we can filter on or just maybe backend or, um, yeah, I, I think looking at the, um, at the, the weights of issues also mm -hmm. uh, would have. Right. Yeah, I mean, I haven't looked at like how many of the back end issues have like, I mean, because we also have good for first time contributors label, like I, it is probably worth looking at. I mean, I we always highlight that label, at, you know, during every hackathon anyways, but yeah, because I haven't been able to do this for the past uh, couple of hackathons, but this is something that, that I definitely want to fix going forward with people, you know, like Vitaly, who's interested more in on the back end side of things versus front end. So, um, cool. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Um, the, the third bullet here is, I mean, obviously we had like a huge growth in the number of MRs, which is great. Uh, but one of the things I noticed was that if you look at the number of people who win the Merge MR prize uh, for people who anyone who has like an MRs merge, that count has been somewhat steady. It's been like a low to like mid 30s, uh, although the overall MR count's been growing, which uh, what, what that tells me is that 
um, bulk of the MR growth is is due to like this two or three people. Um, basically, that's I mean that's definitely what happened like this time around. Um, so you know this is probably something where I probably need to attract more people to start contributing. I think in general, like I mean I haven't looked at the numbers like in detail, but uh, I was actually talking to David about this earlier today. Like we probably attract like five to seven like a first time contributors during hackathon but maybe that number needs to grow um so i mean maybe that's something that i need to look at but uh and then the number of people have mrs merged that's sort of been uh pretty uh pretty constant over the past few quarters so i, I definitely want to have uh more people participating and having their mrs merged so that's something that i definitely want to look at but if you have other, other ideas i i would i would welcome it um, uh, please let me know, uh, either through issues or, or Slack. Um, and the other one, I mean, this is similar to what we talked about in the past. Like maybe we should create a separate category for like the more challenging issues. Uh, cause one of the discussions I had with a number of people was, was that, I mean, some of the contributors definitely want to have as many MRs merged as possible cause they want to get either the grand prize or the second prize. But there are other contributors that are more interested in working on something that's a little bit more challenging and then they actually want to learn something through the experience. They're not necessarily doing it to like a win uh, a, a better prize or better award through the hackathon. Uh, so maybe it's worth highlighting. I think we had some of those uh, for this hackathon. Uh, I mean, one was, I don't know if this is challenging or not, but you know, for Gitter client on iOS, like to be able to log in with your GitLab ID, like no one took up on that. You know, if I, you know, if we had a more substantial prize, maybe we would be able to attract uh, like a front end person to work on that as an example. And then the other thing I remember was like, like more female emojis. Like, I don't think anybody like I took up on that, but that would have been a good one to sort of have more people to participate in. Uh, so maybe we'll have like a separate category for specific, you know, issues that, you know, or MRs that we want to uh, encourage people to work on. Uh, so that's, I mean, sort of four ideas that I thought of. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think the last one is sort of what we talked about in the past. Uh, just want to make sure that we're not just rewarding volume of work, but also quality of work or um, the type of contribution that people are making. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Like, I, I don't know if you have any thoughts or if you agree, disagree, but. Yeah. Ray, we did have a, a contribute for price category label, I think, right? Yeah, Maybe something yeah, like we this. do. Yeah, so maybe this is another way to sort of. Um, you know, I mean, it, I mean, to be honest, for that prize, the, there's only one person who actually like submitted an MR and, and claimed that prize. It's actually Jacopo. Uh, he's been the only one. So I've been looking at ways to sort of uh, revamp that. I mean, maybe this is a way of doing it. So, but, well, yeah, it's a that's a good idea. I guess that that would be my kind of thoughts and concern is is that contribute for prize at the moment a bit redundant if mm -hmm. if we're sort of saying the idea is to highlight issues which are, are good to attack but we've also got um you know accepting mrs and the way and lots of other ways of doing it so mm -hmm. we maybe want to be careful and as maybe george was alluding to there maybe contribute for prizes specific for ones which we want people to attack rather than ones that we're suggesting are easy to attack. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I don't know. Does, I haven't looked to see if um, when you hover over the label, does it give you a good um, description of? Yeah. What, I mean, it, yeah, I think it, yeah, it, it does. But I think like, I mean, I'm guilty of this too. Like the, the label description is sometimes not descriptive enough. Uh, so that's, um, I mean, like, I think, I, I don't know what the, dis what description I'd put in for contribute for prize, but it might be too generic and it doesn't really mean much. Um, so, but that's, yeah, definitely something that I can look at. If, if we use this for marking advanced, uh, issues, probably rename it because its name is so much redundant with accepted merge requests 
Mm -hmm. So it's not clear. It's a first glance. Uh, what's the different uh, differences between the two? Like between contribute for prize and accepting merge request. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, you know, me. This is not. You know, we probably need a different term for this, but uh, make it more like this is a challenging issue or something like, or yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, something along those lines. So, um, so it, it'll be sort of a badge of accomplishment, I guess, once if, if, if people actually complete that work, however long it takes. But go ahead, Lee. But it makes more sense outside of the hackathon, the contribute for prize label. Yeah. Um, but within the hackathon, I guess it makes less sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, we can highlight these issues, like, you know, you know, even outside of the context of the hackathon, even during hackathon, I don't mind saying there are these other issues that I mean, you, you get an extra prize for. Um, but, you know, I don't necessarily want people to just wait for this event that happens once a quarter to, to work on something because it might actually take longer than than what's reasonably doable during like a 10 day period we have for hackathon. Right? So. Uh, again, I, I wonder yeah. um, some of the questions that have come in Git are around um, what should we contribute to? Uh, George, I know you helped to suggest some some issues, and I kind of mentioned some of the techniques that I use to, mm -hmm. you know, look for old issues, look for popular issues, look for issues with certain labels. Um, again, uh, it's it's a bit of a concern to, to duplicate by having labels that kind of cover those things, but mm -hmm. whether we either provide hyperlinks to those or, or just some additional suggestions to say, well, you know, you, you might just want to go for things that have got a weight of one, or you might want to go for um, old issues, or you might want to go for popular issues or um, issues flagged with technical debt or, um, just a few more suggestions then i know you normally mm -hmm. provide a couple of links but mm -hmm. cool okay yeah let me the think about somebody yeah sorry oh, the, sorry yeah. The, the fact that a few people have asked the question um in the the channel previously but it's just yeah to save people asking again provide that a few of the answers to those questions in the the kind of kickoff notes or the um, hackathon site itself going forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. Okay. All right. Noah, well, thanks for your feedback. Um, let me move on here. I don't know how to. There we go. So, uh, GDK survey, there's a link to the issue. And I haven't looked at the issue in a while, but I'm not 100% sure if it has a link to the survey itself. Uh, it may not, because what was being circulated internally was like like a preview link that I don't think was public to, or maybe it was public because it didn't require any login or anything like that I remember. I, I sort of went through like a couple of iterations of it. Uh, but I mean, the survey is for, I mean, this is good. It's to, for both GitLab team members and the wider community members. Uh, and hopefully like either today or tomorrow, um, you know, it should be going out. Uh, so I, I ex had a quick exchange with Ash McKenzie, uh, I think about 20, like 24 hours ago, it, it, would, it sounded like it was about to go out pretty soon. Uh, but the survey is not going to be very surprising. There are like a demo demographic type of questions, like what your roles are. And that also talks, I um, mean, asks a lot of questions about your, what OS, uh, what, which operating system you have and like how much memory and ask questions about your systems that you use for, for your development work. And then questions about like, you know, how do you install like Ruby and, and Node.js uh, on your system? And, and all, like a satisfaction question on, on different areas, like how easy it is, it, is it to use? How you, are you happy with like the support? Do you even know the support's available and, and documentation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, there were, we went through like a multiple iterations. I, I think the first iteration, uh, early iterations were more focused on like a GitLab team members. So I think George and I both provided feedback on well, if you talk about Slack channel, that's not relevant for people in the wider community. So, I mean, there's some 
uh, tweaks that they need to make, but I, it, it's, uh, it's not terribly long uh, survey. I think like you can even uh, take the survey on, on the phone. Uh, they showed a prototype. I think it's like a five or six screens that, that you should be done. Uh, should be going out pretty soon. And then, uh, I mean, GDK team, we've been doing an office hour uh, that, I mean, I think Lee, you probably have like a hundred percent attendance record for that particular <laughs> office hour. We'll probably talk about that, including at like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. your time last month. Appreciate you joining. So yeah, well, there'll probably definitely be a topic next week. I uh, haven't sent the invites out yet, but uh so i mean stay tuned i uh, definitely appreciate you uh, uh participating in the survey you'll probably get like a number of reminders from me uh to to take the survey i definitely want to have uh, make improvements uh to the gdk to make it easier to use uh, for contributors because it's one of the um i mean frequently i mean i think i don't know what the percentage is like uh lee probably would agree i think 50 percent of the questions on gitter are probably gdk related uh or something close to that and and then i mean fortunately we have people like lee Rajendra, and others that are uh that jump on and answer those questions which which i appreciate uh, but hopefully uh you know we'll we'll you know the data will help make improvements to the gdk so it's it's a lot easier to use than it is today but, so that's uh, should be coming out soon. Um, just, just to mention, very much for next week's call, but um, somebody jumped on the Gitter channel and mentioned that um, the latest version of Windows 10 now has um, full support for for Linux version two, as they're calling it. And um, mm -hmm. after me jumping ship very recently and um, removing Windows from all my laptops and installing Ubuntu instead. Um, I, I've now gone back to Windows and can run Ubuntu inside Windows. I'm going to call it natively. It's not exactly native, but it's a lot more native than running it in a VM. Um, right. And GDK works, you know, following exactly the same instructions as if I was running it natively. So um, cool. that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was Ethan, right? Who that's right. Yeah, that little, yeah. That provided a little nugget on on Gitter, and and I think Lee, you you already updated a, a documentation. Uh, we'll put that put that update. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, latest development on GDK. Yeah. So you know whether there are a lot of guys that want to contribute that are, are Windows users, I don't know. But if there are, I really hope that that will um, ease their pain a little bit. Cool. Awesome. All right. So uh, the last slide. Uh, so I mentioned earlier, we sort of stopped a lot of the, uh, I mean, pretty much all of the social campaigning. So what would have been happening uh, last week was reminder on the GitLab CFP. Uh, so what we decided was to sort of extend the deadline because we sort of got, we, I mean, we pretty much completely gone quiet on the, on the social side of things. Uh, so if you think you missed the deadline and and uh, you're upset, I mean, you have another uh, few days uh, to submit the CFP, but I think it's end of the day Pacific time on, on Friday. Um, so um, uh, if you have a chance or if you uh, thought you missed the deadline, you have another few days to submit the CFP. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I thought we there like the CFPs were coming in at a decent rate like the last week. I don't know the numbers, um, but uh, definitely want to see more submissions on on the number of tracks. Um, so um, uh, I'm helping out on on the community track. Uh, so I don't I probably haven't necessarily paid attention to submission for other tracks, but uh, definitely want to see. Uh, submissions across uh, different areas for for uh, for the event in a couple of months. Um, the next one. Oh, before I move forward, any questions on on commit or the CFP? Uh, I mean, if you have any questions, if you want to run ideas uh, by like me or John or uh, John Coglin or Emily Chen, just just let us know. I mean, if if you want like a feedback on the CFP before submitting it, we'll be happy to help out and, 
and, and uh, discuss your submissions. Uh, the next one is just a quick question on, on vacation plans. I think we took uh, one of the months off in the summer last time because a lot of people were on vacation. Uh, I can't me remember whether that was, was July or August, but wanted to see if you have any, if people are okay with just continuing with the monthly meetings or like a lot of people are, happen to be off like one month, we could, we could just uh, take a pause uh, during the summer break, but just wanted to take a quick poll uh, and see what people's availabilities are. I know like a I guess in EU, like, I guess the borders are going to open again pretty soon. So people may be able to travel, but it might be an interesting summer. We may all be stuck yeah, at home. But, I, I think so. I think it might yeah. be winter vacation this year. <laughs> well, yeah. So we'll see. Like, that sort of hits it, like, it coincides with the flu season in the, during, during the winter. But, yeah, we might be not, we might not be vacationing far away for a while. But, yeah. Yeah, but, I will be vacationing in France uh, in August. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, maybe I'll do a quick like a. Uh, I, I guess we have a new polling feature in in uh, in Slack, so maybe I'll do a poll like people that take. I know uh, David might be back because I know he's taking like uh, three weeks off, like late July, early August. But you know, maybe we'll take a pause in August if a lot of people are off in August. But, yeah. Cool. Um, all right, so the last one, yeah, thanks for the reminder, Hannes. I mean, this is something that we uh, dropped the ball on. Um, so I know I like I reached out to a lot of people, uh, I mean, people on the core team plus others about um, uh, advisory council. Uh, I think like the discussion that David and I were having with, with some of the colleagues in the marketing team was, was on how formalized do we want this team to be like with like a formal meetings or do we just reach out to um, people for feedback if, if we're working on something that, that needs community feedback. So that's sort of, I think that's where David and I sort of left it at and, and we kind of uh, haven't like, you know, Push it through the uh, to the finish line. So, uh, apologies for that, Hannes. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll definitely put this back on the radar with David uh, 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 during our one-on-one -on -one meeting next week. But uh, Hannes, said, did you have anything else on this besides just reminding us to to uh, carry this through completion? Or I don't know. If, I don't know if you have any yeah, like a feedback I, I or concerns. Sure if... Yeah. I wasn't sure if the uh, CAC as such is still planned because right. the handbook change has been open for more than seven months now. Right. And yeah. from what I understand, like three to four months ago, uh, some people were already contacted if they wanted to be on the CAC. Mm -hmm. But since then, nothing seemed to happen. Right, uh, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, I know I actively, like, recruited, I mean, including from the core team, but others, uh, community members that I work with um, about, uh, about, uh, about the group. But, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll definitely get back in touch with David and, and, and figure out the next step. So apologies. It's completely slipped our mind over the past few months. So. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, any other topics, anything else um, people want to discuss? I have um, one other, yeah. again, maybe slightly off topic, but um, Gitter itself, um, I, I tend to pay more attention to the contributors channel, but um, mm -hmm. I am in the, the main GitLab channel itself. Um, mm -hmm. And there's been quite a lot of negativity recently and a lot of questions around why Gitter actually exists. Um, okay. And, you know, I, I clearly don't know the answer to that. Um, okay. You know, how it was born. I, I actually did a bit of Googling and it looks like it was acquired um, by GitLab yeah. at some point um, and actually open sourced from whatever it was before. Um, but you know, the the general sort of thoughts, everyone that was on the channel was, well, we're developers. We all use Slack. Why on earth are we using Gitter? 
um, mm -hmm. all the questions that are asked in there go unanswered, et cetera, et cetera. Now that's, that's obviously not quite the case, a bit of an exaggeration, et cetera, but it, it raised some interesting questions that, um, you know, I'd be keen to know some of the answers to like, do, do you expect GitLab staff to be in the GitLab channel to answer questions or is it um, purely for the community to help each other out? Um, mm -hmm. Why, why is, um, Gitter used rather than Slack, et cetera. Okay, well, thanks for bringing that up. I'll try to find those like uh, comments. If I can't find it, I might ping you, uh, yeah. Lee, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there are, there are three channels. I mean, there's a channel for heroes uh, that's, uh, I mean, John's, I think, doing a good job of moderating uh, and contributor. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I mean, there are a lot of active people there, like like you, Lee, and and Rajendra, and, and I try to look in there at least a few times a day. Like, hope, hopefully, I'm not too terribly behind. Uh, but I don't know if that's the case with the main channel. I'll I'll talk to Eric uh, on the Gitter team and 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 get his take on it. But I appreciate that. But, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't really look at the channel either. I, I, I point people to go there if people have like a user, like a how to use GitLab type of questions. But uh, I don't think I like uh, looked in there too much and, and try to answer any questions. But I mean, thanks for bringing that up. So. Yeah, I mean, not to pile on here, Ray, but mm -hmm. I would kind of echo that. Like, mm -hmm. in a way, it feels like a little disconnected because uh, uh, you know, omnibus ships matter most. So that's what like the customers are using if they're not using Slack. So mm -hmm. like, you know, I'd say the order here is Slack matter most. Gitter is pretty low on people's mm -hmm. totem pole. Um, right. You know, you, as you find know, I don't really do much there because it's a lot harder to be engaged on something that you're not using mm -hmm. regularly for other stuff. Right. right. Okay. No, good point. So let me talk to folks on the Gitter team and, uh, I'll let them know that's going on. In addition to that, Ray, may yeah. I add that uh, Gitter actually is uh, home for many uh, open source projects besides Git, uh, GitLab itself. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it'd be interesting to see some usage analytics that I'm sure somebody's got on the right. GitLab side. <laughs> right. Like I know. Uh, not not all projects are interested in using Slack, but I know a number of open source projects have, you know, figured out how to set up with the Slack API a way to have like a free team. Mm -hmm. um, right. So. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Any other topics, uh, questions? I was interested, yeah. Ray, in the um, the the dashboard that you linked in the um, blog post. Um, mm. Is is that tool something that's because I'm aware of Mel Meltano, is it that's kind of been introduced in the last let's say six months or so? But um, mm. that dashboard that you linked is is isn't Meltano, is it some, something? No, it's, uh, yeah, Biturgia is a company that, that I've been working with for the past, uh, I don't know, four or five years. And they work with a lot of open source uh, projects to provide uh, project dashboards. Uh, so we, I mean, it's basically a paid service. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's not, I mean, it's not related to uh, GitLab, except that, I mean, I guess you are a vendor. And to plug in using the API or plug direct into the database or? Uh, yeah, I mean, they basically like, like make API calls. Um, cool. Cool. Yeah, so they're, they're just using our APIs to extract, uh, extract. I mean, it's all publicly like available data that, that they're using. Cool. Cool. All right, cool. Well, uh, thanks everybody for your time and uh, I'll Talk to you again uh, next month, if not sooner. Great stuff. Thanks, All right. Ryan. Have a good, have a good day. Have a good, day. Or good evening. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.